is Mike. I am in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting Judd Coon Chevrolet. And one of the cool things about Judd Coon, they have awesome trucks and Chevrolet trucks, lift trucks. They have Corvettes and Camaros and all kinds of cool stuff, but they also have classic cars. So this is one of those classic cars. This is a 1986 Rolls Royce Silver Spur. And the Silver Spur is also known as the, the, the Silver Spirit, Flying Spur, Silver Dawn, and um, the Silver Spur is basically the longer wheelbase of all those. So let's go ahead and check it out. This is a very interesting vehicle. This is the really the first time I was, uh, I've ever was able to check out a Rolls Royce up close and in person. And of course, this is an older model, but still, it's very exciting to me. And it's more of a traditional car, I guess. I mean, it's 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 made to be high quality and everything. But uh, back then, they had, um, you know, they were, they were limited on technology and everything. So by today's standards, it's you know pretty not basic, but it's not you know like real high tech or anything like that. So let's go ahead. And, of course, 1986. So what do I expect? <laughs> so here in the front, you can see it has the spirit of ecstasy. Head ornament, uh, hood ornament here. You've got the Rolls Royce. I mean, that's why people buy it. Is the name front and center on the front of the vehicle. Then you have the kind of 80s traditional side by side headlights there, and the 80s chrome bumper. <laughs> and this is like a pearl white color. I don't know if you can see that. And it's sitting on. 15 inch steel wheels and they have locking hubcaps and so this has a 6.75 liter V8 like a large engine with a three-speed transmission and they the tree the, the transmission is actually General Motors but the old car was made in Cheshire England and it was actually designed in the 70s it started production in 1980 and it lasted to 1999 this is the mark one and you can see here on the inside of the passenger door we have some wood grain here on the sides and actually I can feel it's real wood there on the top and pretty much everything's soft and comfortable you have that large threshold manual adjustments on the passenger side really cushy plush comfortable leather seats lots of soft cushion on them There's the glove compartment and check it out. It has the original paperwork and stuff. You can open up the boot right there. It says the boot. <laughs> Got the Rolls Royce right there. Symbol. Let's check out the back. See so you have the ashtray there. And the power window, the door lock, the wood grain. Very extremely comfortable seats here in the back. Plenty of leg room. Ridiculous amount of leg room and comfort back here. And this holds down this massive armrest here. And this lifts up and then you've got like a... I guess this is like an old car phone thing there. Yeah, that's for an old car phone to be in. Now, if you guys remember, cars, car phones were the were the, the high society stuff back then. The actual phone was in the car, and they had an antenna on the car. So let's check this out. Got a little tray there, similar to what you'd find in like an airplane or something. It's pretty cool. It makes going through the drive-through easier, <laughs> and also, you know, like driving movies and all that stuff.
You got the dual exhaust back here. Silver Spur badge. Rolls Royce badge. <laughs> the Judd Coon badge. Okay, so in the trunk, this little thing lifts up, and that's where you can put your key in to lock and unlock it. And it has a little magnet that keeps it from flopping around. Then you can open it up with this little latch. Pretty heavy, but you can tell it's counterbalanced trunk. Pretty good size trunk as well. You see it has all carpeted in there. Looks like it's all original carpeting. Let's take a look in here. We've got, uh, I guess there are like tools or something in there. Not really sure. Maybe, uh, I'm not sure. It's just an access hole for some reason. Let's take a look under the carpet. It looks like a place to access the, the fuel compartment. Check this out. Wood. Wood, wood panels and check this out we've got a toolkit Rolls Royce motors open that up good air we've got a tire pressure gauge wrench all kinds of cool stuff Let's see if the wrenches say Rolls Royce on them no they say George that's pretty neat All right, that one, that side's kind of closed up with screws, so we can't go in there. No telling what's in there. And we've got a little service plate there that's empty. And one thing I noticed, the, um, the trunk and the hood are very easily moved. They're very, like, almost perfectly balanced uh, as far as the counterweight. So let's take a look under the hood. Take a look at that 6.75 liter. What I thought was pretty interesting is that the hood actually lifts this way. And like literally you can do this with one finger. I mean it's like super light because it's so counterbalanced or it actually has a spring loaded system that's so perfect that the hood is so easy to just lift up and push down so this is part of the this has a self-leveling hydraulic shock system so the ride quality is like super important to Rolls-Royce apparently so I would assume so so uh, they have this hydraulic um, you know pump up the shocks and lower it so a self-leveling hydraulic system for the suspension and there's part of that uh, hydraulic fluid would, would be stored in there and you got the Rolls Royce it looks like some kind of uh, throttle body injection system possibly possibly I'm not really sure I know it has a distributor back there Take a look on this side. We have some relays, blower motor there. And the 6.75 V8 engine is in this bad boy. Um, I haven't been able to find kind of an, an accurate uh, horsepower, so if you happen to know what the horsepower and torque and all that is, uh, if you could let me know or leave it in the comments, that'd be great so everybody can find out. very easily open and close that hood so let's go ahead and start it up got the key right here not sure what that buzzing noise is okay get us off that's like super annoying Let's hear the exhaust. It's pretty quiet. So 
so here on the driver's door you got your power windows for all your windows and your door locks and then you got a little storage pocket there on the bottom but check this out you got the VIN sticker there and it has Rolls Royce motor and it has like a number okay so here we are on the inside and before I show you anything more I want to correct myself earlier I said that the passenger side was manual it's only manual for the back seat for tilting the back you can actually adjust them right here both both the front seats you have the um, ability to move them up and down and all over the place uh, just the back tilting the back is uh, is a manual okay so let's take a look here and this thing has a lot of cool you know switches and stuff it's it's totally from you can tell it's from a different era back in the 1900s and uh, <laughs> so yeah lots of leg room and the seats kind of up higher than what I expected um, I can't really put the seat any lower so the steering wheel is a little bit kind of in my lap more than uh, I would like but um, and I'm not you know seeing any kind of ability to tilt the steering wheel which I may be wrong but I hadn't been able to find that so let's take a look at it as you can see it has an aftermarket radio so over here you have your light controls off and then parking light and then it says head so headlights and then I guess this is your battery light your oil pressure and there's actually your uh, ignition switch and so down here we have oil level and I guess we can not sure what that's for when I push the button nothing really happens I guess it it resets like if you were to put oil in it you reset it or something possibly I'm not really sure uh, windshield wiper controls are here and then you have all these what people call idiot lights um, that will illuminate when you need to pay attention to it there's your speedometer, your oil pressure gauge is here, temperature, and then your uh, gas gauge, and then your your voltage for the for your battery. But check this out: oxygen sensor has a light for that as well. So I'm not sure if the oxygen sensor is something is like a wear item you have to replace frequently or something. You can dim your headlights here, and then um, I guess refuel. You would push that. Um, every time you get more gas possibly I'm not I'm not really sure what that's for and I wish I knew I wish I was like an expert in the Rolls Royce in this Rolls Royce but this this vehicle is kind of hard to get information on so I hope um, you know to try to show you the vehicle as much as possible but I'm certainly no expert on this vehicle so you got your climate control here I have it on automatic and I have it on cold so you can change the temperature here these little wheels for the upper and lower so it's a dual zone but it's not driver and passenger it's upper and lower four-way flashes are here and not really sure what that is all about maybe you can maybe anybody knows that can let me know so you have a clock and outside temperature you can see it's very hot today and uh, the the thermometer is working pretty good because that's about what it is about 100 degrees and these things are to block the air so you can push those in so to keep air from going in and out of this vent you can pull it out to let the air flow again same thing there you have the vents there cigarette lighter and then a aftermarket radio not sure what this switch is for I guess that's the fan and that might not be factory I'm not really sure so your side mirror controls are here um, so you know you could adjust it and I'm not sure what this is another mystery switch not sure what that is so there's your seat adjustments there and it has these uh, dual armrests that um, you, know, you can lift up individually and then you have this storage pocket down here that has that pretty cool tray and then these armrests kind of sandwich open and you can have some storage space in there and a little phone jack and I guess this is where you could put your 
your car phone. This one doesn't seem to open up. It's just the passenger side. Looks like a microphone here, possibly for your car phone. As your day and night mode, manual, of course. That one has a mirror there with a little, little, little light. I get, I'm not sure how to turn that on. You have these interior lights that have a little focus beam on it. Have some floorboard lights down there be interesting to see this car at nighttime okay well I showed you the car I'm not really an expert in it but um, hopefully you get an idea of you know the way the car was and everything I wish I knew a little bit more to tell you but one thing I wanted to mention here's your cruise control by the way is here's the to change gears it's just this switch and it's super easy to turn I mean it's like it's like it's not really a manual manually changing the transmission it's like it's electric or something because it's like no energy to, to push this to change the gears and I'm not sure what the deal was is with the I there so you have drive and then you have I and then you have L so maybe you can tell me what I stands for I'm not really sure what that is Anyways, I appreciate you watching, and you know, if anybody's a Rolls Royce expert, maybe you can, you know, maybe explain some of these things, some of these mystery switches and stuff like that. And maybe if you've driven one of these, you can give us your experience. But just want to kind of show off this car. It's an interesting car. I think it's really neat, and it's kind of like a blast from the past, I guess you could say. So thank you for watching, and thank you to Judd Coon Chevrolet for letting me show off this awesome car, and I'll see you next time.